All right, guys, our hymn lesson for today is Come Thou Almighty King. Hello, I'm Sean Cheek. Welcome to my sight reading lessons for SeanCheek.com. Hymns are great sight reading tools because they're never really that difficult, but you can't really fake it uh, because of the changing chords on every beat most of the time. Okay, so they're great for sight reading practice. <clears throat> so let's take a look here. Um, and, and I'm going to assume you can read music. If you can't read music or have trouble at all reading music, you need to do my 132 sight reading lessons for complete beginner to late intermediate on SeanCheek.com. You can also download PDF files for all the lessons on SeanCheek.com so you can have sheets to practice with yourself. But anyway, I'm going to assume you can read music already, so let's get started. We're going to have an F sharp in the key signature. You can't see it because I'm zoomed in so much, but there's an F sharp, so that tells us we're in the key of G. could be an E minor, but we're in the key of G here. Uh, so that means all Fs are sharp. Now, when you have a sharp in the key signature, you don't have to look and see which one it is. It's always F. If there's one, it's always F. If there's two, it's always F and C. Three is always F, C, G. So they go in order, and the F will be sharp every time we have that letter in this, this hymn here. But let's do the left hand first, because that's what we have most trouble with, right, everyone? Fakes the left hand, doesn't learn the left hand well. Uh, so we're going to learn it well. We're going to start with it and uh, get something out of it here. So we're in 3-4 time three counts per measure. Most of it's just quarter note stuff, so we can do that. So let's take a look. G and B together. And I'm going to use, let's see, maybe two and four. You don't have to use my fingering. Maybe three and five. And then we're going to have G and D. Do that. Now this one you can't reach. It's too far apart. B to D, that's far. So the right hand's going to take that D. Okay? And actually, the right hand's already taken it because the tenor and the alto are on the same note. Did you know you know what four-part harmony is, right? Bass, tenor, alto, soprano. Okay? We call it SATB a lot of times. Soprano, alto, tenor, bass. We'll go top to bottom. but uh -huh. So they're on the same note. So the right hand will take care of that note. So don't, don't, you don't have to reach it. Let's continue with left hand. C octave. And octave means an eighth. O-C-T, right? Octave. And then we converge to D and B. So D and B together. T, then we'll do D and A. T. Now here's another place where it's far apart. The G is way far from the B. I can reach it if I'm in front of the piano, but you don't have to. The right hand can take it. Okay, and if you can reach it, you know, there's no really no need to. Just let the right hand do it. Works out better. All right, let's go here. This is. Um, G and B like we started with, and we're going to do F sharp and D, and then we're going to go to G and D, and then we're going to do A and D together, and an F sharp, while we hold that D on the top, maybe one and three, and F sharp, and then G and D together, and then we end with a D octave, D and D. Okay, so the right hand is, let's see, come, let me not sing it, I'm trying to read the parts, but let me just play it. All right, let's take a look at the right hand, okay? We're going to start with the, the alto and soprano being on G and a D. I'm going to use 2 and 5. You can use 1 and 5 if you'd like. And then we're going to do G and B, which is a third, which you can use 2 and 4. And maybe 1 and 2 on D and G. Now I say maybe because everyone has their own fingerings they like to use. E and A, I'm going to use 2 and 5 for me. D and G with 1 and 4. And then D and F sharp together. F sharp, right? No sharp next to it, but you got to sharp it because the key signature, the F sharp that you can't see over there. And then D and G together. Come thou almighty king. And then we pick up again with, that's a rest. See that? That's how you did rest back in, you know, a long time ago with type. It's a quarter rest. One, two, rest. And then D and G again. D and A. And then G and B. Now we have, look at this, F sharp and C make a tritone, a kind of a weird sounding interval. 
Then the alto jumps up to A while the soprano holds the pinky on C. And then G and B together. And then F sharp and A. So we have come Let's try hands together. I'm going to go really slow for you. Really slow. One, ready, and go. I'm sorry, I missed my B there. But remember the right hand is going to take that D, but it's also going to take that B. I forgot to do that when I was showing you right hand. The, the right hand will take that B for the tenor. Let's do it again. Go. When you're pedaling, pedal each syllable because the chord changes on each syllable. Okay? So, a uh, way you should practice. Right hand, left hand. Then maybe just try one measure if you can't do the whole line. Try one measure, hands together, work on it. Maybe in the next day you'll try a measure one, measure two, measure three when you're ready. Okay? A little bit at a time. All right, this part one, we did this right here in part two on SeanCheek.com. We'll finish the hymn, and then in part three, I'll show you how to add notes to fill it out so you can play it uh, during congregational singing or, or whatever, just for your own enjoyment, to add notes uh, to the hymn, to the four parts. Hope you enjoy it. I'll talk to you later.